Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the first DOLC on air for DOLC 2023 with the title, Get to Know Legal Career Path, Law Firm Edition. Allow me to introduce myself first. My name is Shakira Daniel, and I am a third year undergraduate law student at Universitas Indonesia as your host today. Days of Law Career is an annual law event known as the biggest law job fair in Indonesia held by career development department BEM FAUI to accommodate the needs of law students and graduates in Indonesia in becoming future legal practitioners by providing information and insights regarding job opportunities, internships, and higher education seeking. Furthermore, DOLC also connects them to job providers such as law firms, companies, government institution, non-governmental organization, and academic institution. DOLC on Air is a podcast made by DOLC that provides information and add insight as well as to become a platform for law students to provide projections of the world of work after completing their studies. Whereas on this episode, we'll be talking about Get to Know Legal Career Path Law Firm Edition. And before we start, I would like to introduce our speaker for today, DOLC on Air. Our speaker for today is Abang Mahardika Sarjana. Bang Mahardika graduated from Faculty of Law, Universitas Indonesia in 2005 and completed his LLM from the National University of Singapore. And he is now, the current, he is now uh, a partner at HHP Law Firm in Finance and Project Practice Group and has been specializing in the banking and financing works for more than 16 years. Abang Mahardika was awarded Notable Practitioner uh, for Banking from IFLR IFLR 1000 in 2019 to 2022 and has recently awarded Rising Star in Banking banking and Finance from Asia Law Leading Lawyers 2022. And he was among the list of ALB Asia 40 Under 40 in 2021 and was also awarded as Indonesia's Young Lawyer of the Year 2020 by ALB Asia. Now please welcome our speaker. Hello, Bang How are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. It's, I'm very glad to have you here, Bang. Of course, likewise. <laughs> and uh, we certainly can wait to hear your answers to our questions. All right. <laughs> Let's get to it. Okay, then. Um, as a notable lawyer, we are very curious as to what specialization did you take when you were a law student, and does it really affect your chosen career path? Oh, yeah, it does. Um, so, basically, when I was a student, there were two choices that is being that were, that were shortlisted by me, right? So I was planning to take either international law or business law. So during my first year, I did discuss with um, a couple of friends and alumni, and I decided to take business law, Pekampa. So I did take business law, and I focused myself on all the business law programs um, during my years in the university. So, uh, did you already know that uh, you were going to focus on banking and finance during your uni years? No, um, <laughs> I love I love banking, and um, our professor at the time, Pak Yunus, who was actually the head of PPATK at the time, um, he was an excellent um, lecturer. But my interest when I was in the university was capital markets. So when I first joined the firm, um, I told the firm that I want to concentrate myself and try capital markets. So I, I ended up um, spending my first year in the law firm uh, for capital market practice group. But when my specialization comes, because we have a rotation program, I did uh, try banking. And somehow I find um, banking is much more suitable for me uh, at the time. So I stayed on for more than 16 years now in, uh, in, in banking and uh, specializing in banking. So uh, when, when you took uh, business law at the end, uh, did you know that you wanted to be a corporate lawyer? Oh yeah, definitely. So my go-to career of choice uh, when I was a student, when I got accepted, uh, in the Faculty of Law Universitas Indonesia, I wanted to be either a diplomat or a, or, or a lawyer. Now, which law that I want to specialize in? Um, I told you before that I discussed with a lot of alumni and I decided that corporate law is something that is more suitable for me. I don't think that I have the stomach to go to courts and do litigation, so corporate law is something that is more, more niche, more, more acceptable for my appetite. So I went there, um, 
and then I decided to take business law and corporate law and you know from that moment on 100% that I want to work in a law firm <laughs> so um, I think I told you that I was with Alsa so during my years in Alsa um, I tried to find an exercise or an event which involved law firm so um, for instance like when we do English competitions I don't know whether they still have it now but whenever we need funding, we go to law firms and I will be the first one to raise my hand and I want to go to that law firm so I can see how law firm looks like uh, and I can I can shortlist on the law firms that I want to go to when I graduated. Mm, that's actually a very interesting story, Yulung. Um A lot of uh, law students are uh, also having the same dilemma as you, mm -hmm. as you were um, and uh, most but mo most of people I know, they are um, mostly leaning towards uh, working in a law firm as a lawyer. So um, I want to know, like, what preparations are needed to apply to work in a law firm, and what was the process that you went through to become a corporate lawyer? Well, it, 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 it's quite funny because law firm and your days in the university are very different. Um, basically, in the university, you study the basics. But not all the information and knowledge that you obtain in the university is actually being used in a law firm because in a law firm it's much more practical, um, so it's much more pragmatist as, as well. So you learn new things in a law firm. Now, what I can say is that you need to excel, firstly, when you, in, in your university days because there are um, tasks that you need to go through to enter into a law firm. There are minimum requirements as well that you need to pass. I think HHP now is, is quite lenient. Uh, we only require 2.75 of uh, total GPA that you have, which is quite low and, and, and which is fine. But on top of that, we always see on whether you have organization experience. Um, so things like um, mooting competitions, um, organizations like ALSA, ILMS, BAM, we always respect um, the organizational experience because it shows that you're active, number one, you're curious, and number three, you are able to work in a team. Because if you don't have that kind of organizational experience, then we will question on whether you are able to work in a team. And in a law firm, working in a team is very, very important because you cannot work alone. I mean, as much as you like it or not, law firm is about teamwork. It's, it's the same thing that you do when you have a, this project in a college, but now it's in a bigger scale where you have a transaction that you need to run. So there will be this pyramid system that you need to go through. There will be the role that you need to follow and you need to work in a team. Now, if you don't have any experience in working in a team, i.e. you don't have any organizational experience, then the question would be whether you can able to cope with the kind of environment that you need to uh, face in a law firm settings. So yeah, I mean, uh, one thing is excellence in, in your academic studies is important, but number two, organizational experiences is also key. Now the third point, which is more important than the first one and the second one is, you need to have very good personality. We don't like to work with mean people, right? Uh, we don't like to work with toxic, negative people. We like to work with positive people. We, we, we like to work with people who is known to have fun, very kind and very friendly, but able to work at the same time. So having that positive attitude will certainly help. At the end of the day, you need to pass an interview process anyway. So you do need to work, well, you do need to show your charisma, your, your charm, and the, the true personality that you have, because it, it does actually make an effect on that interview process. Okay, um, you said that aspiring lawyers need to be able to cope with uh, work, um, trans uh, big transactions uh, in law firm. And are there any unexpected experiences when working at a law firm and how did you overcome them? <laughs> Well, I think there are plenty of things happening in a law firm because I think, you know, working in a law firm is like having a life, right? Um, there are always unexpected things. Um, and 
I think I, I give you my experience. I mean, I've done 95% of M&A of banks in Indonesia. I've done the Dynamon deal, which is you know, one of the largest M&A of banks in Indonesia. I just recently finished the merger of the Bank Syariah Indonesia. And there are a handful of other deals which I cannot mention, but each deal will have their own complexity. Now, I have um, a couple of experience where a client of ours having resided abroad and and they they have this very strong um, anti-corruption culture now we're having this acquisition of an indonesian company and suddenly in part of the due diligence we see that there are like a slight like a bit of money given to a police officer that is escorting um, one of the atm machines so if you remember, I mean, ATM will need to be filled with money, and and when when the cash is being taken from the head office and put into the ATM, there will be police escorts, and um, this company actually pays the police escorts like an extra money for them to have lunch. It's only two hundred thousand, but the thing is, having this global company acquiring an Indonesian company, they have different set of culture and they have different set of um, they have different set of rules as well. So we mentioned to them that under Indonesian law and under Indonesian culture, um, there are limitations of having facilitation, but giving money um, of 200,000 to a police officer for them to have lunch or, or basically giving them a tip. It's not, it's, there are arguments to say that it's not actually in compliance with the Indonesian law and rules. So, convincing um, convincing clients who are basically foreigners coming into Indonesia, then you do need to present yourself into their shoes first and to see on what is actually their concern. Now, for somebody in Japan or for somebody in Hong Kong, that is actually a big thing. It's only $15 worth of money. But still though, um, it, it's, it's a huge violation if you do that in Japan or in, in Hong Kong. So we need to explain to them that it's not a huge big of a deal in Indonesia. We're giving them the perspective of Indonesian culture and, and we're, we're also applying that culture and that um, legal framework into their own legal framework and how that it will fit in uh, so that the transaction could actually go through. So at the end of the day, um, they, 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 they trust us giving us the confidence that okay now because you know how we think then we will follow what what advice that you have so from from creating that kind of relationship we become trusted advisors to them so there's there's that example of complexity when we deal with with a client and you know when when we do that sometimes it's it, you think that it's simple but at the back office this is something that we always discuss with our team and it's actually important to have uh, great minds within our team so that we can think creatively but at the same time we're not going overboard from the legal framework and I think that takes really um, aligning of the great minds and putting together the advice and giving them to the client that's the most challenging part of, 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 of being a lawyer. And not everyone can do that because uh, you do need to have the analytical skills, you need to have the creativity uh, to think through on how to get things done. And um, not everybody can actually do that. And it's not something that can be taught. It's something that grows in you. And it's just something that you have, but you don't know for sure that you have it in you until you're being challenged. And the good thing of working in a law firm, you're being challenged every day. <laughs> And therefore, you're, you're trained to do that. So I think the challenge is, is enormous, um, being a lawyer and, and, and working in a law firm, because you're the only trusted person that will guide your foreign client to come into Indonesia and do investments in Indonesia. And that's a heavy burden. So there's actually a lot of challenges that needs to be faced by a lawyer, but that would actually help us become a more creative and help us grow as a person, ya bang? Yes. I think it's the same thing as a pilot. I mean, when you become a pilot, people will think that how many hours that you have fun? Yeah? How many hours that you have flew? 
in an airplane. Whether you've been trained of uh, piloting an Airbus A330, or whether you're, you know, you're the kind of pilot who is actually flying a turboprop airplane. Now, being a lawyer is like that. People will ask on whether what kind of experience they have. What is your credentials? How long have you been doing this stuff? And that's why the more um, experienced lawyers will have more um, or will have higher billable rates. You know, in the litigation world, people, very senior um, litigators will charge thousand dollars an hour. That's because they're worth the experience and people will pay for that because the experience is something that cannot be replicated by people who are not experienced yet. And that's the value of becoming a lawyer and that's why you need to be focused on your specializations. And just like a pilot, the more hours that you turn in, um, the more experience that you have, the more respected that you become. And that's the key ingredients of having of becoming a, a lawyer. You have to be patient on on doing the things that you love. Okay. Um, to motivate law students and fresh graduates, uh, can you tell us about the pros and cons that you have gotten while working in a law firm? Ooh, pros and cons. Yes. I think, let me start with the cons first. Then I'll start with the pros. I think in, for, for Indonesian culture, we, we love to give the <laughs> bad news first and ending something with the good news, right? So the cons would be um, a law firm is not, is, we're no different with uh, any other consultancy firm, right? So we're giving consultancy services to our clients. The consultancy is in a form of legal consultancy. Now, gi given that we're a consultant, then it, it will be automatically comes with long hours because we need to think through on how we structure a deal, for instance. And, and that structuring pace will need to be done in a certain manner where it will take long hours. So long hours will come with the job, especially when you're a younger lawyer. Number two, um, the demand is very high because Especially when you come from a prestigious universities like you know universities in Indonesia, people will be expecting much, uh, and, and the expectation is very high because you're dealing with an international world here. You're dealing with international trade where people will no longer tolerate on minor mistakes. So the the demand is very high in providing one a quality advice meaning that your advice is readable, it's very commercial, and it's acceptable to the client. And that's not going to be very easy to build because you need to translate the Indonesian regulatory framework and you need to put into an advice, like if you cook something in your kitchen, and provided a, a very delicious meal in a manner that it's a Michelin star restaurant, but you, you do it in a kitchen. So you need to do it in a manner that the client will actually easily understand your advice and and they, they, they can actually bring it forward that your, your advice is commercial enough so they can actually take it forward and do the transaction. That's number two. Num that's number one. And number two, um, I forget what am I what am I going to say. <laughs> but number two is basically after you've done the advice, then the given that the demand is so high, then you need to see whether the advice is international standard. Meaning there's no typo, there is no mispronunciation, the grammar is correct, so the the English bit is proper. So that's going to be a bit harder for us as a uh, non-English non -English speaker because English is not our mother tongue, right? Yes. So we have the tools for that. So, so I guess those are the cons where the demand is very high and the long hours is there. If you cannot cope with that, then it's going to be a stressful job. Now, let me, let me have you sink in for a while that it is actually a stressful job, but there are pros. 
Now the pro one is you're going to learn a lot. As a human and, and, and as a legal scholar coming into a law firm, you're going to have so many experience where you can advance not only as a legal professional but also as a human being. You are going to be taught to be very disciplined in your timing. You're going to be taught to be more professional as a person. You're going to be taught to be more knowledgeable as a person. Because law firm, although there's a lot of work, but there's a lot of training as well. And there's a lot of enhancement of the of your soft skills to become a, a, a better and more professional human being in a sense. So that's one pros. Number two, depending on the law firm, but you're going to gain more friendship in a law firm. Because given the long hours, I think the upside of working in a long hour is that you get to know your friends a lot better. Um, given that you know your friends a lot better than you creating new best friends in a law firm. And I think there's a lot of uh, people that I know and people that I see in our office where they haven't actually known each other before they come into the office and now they become best friends. And even the alumni that we have, they become close-knit as well, even though they're not working in the same setting as anymore. But, they, but given the close-knit that they establish during their time in a, in a law firm, then they become best friends throughout their life. So, um, but then you're creating an, a positive environment and you're adding new positive environment and positive friends into your life. Number four, um, all is basically compensated with um, the remuneration that you're going to get. Because I think law firm will, is still the, the better or the higher standard in terms of giving remuneration to all graduates. Um, that is in addition to the health benefit that you're going to get. Because we know that you're going to work in a long hours. There's a lot of demands. Sometimes people can get sick and sometimes people can get stressed out. And that's why the health benefit and the um, like other types of activities, social activities that we have, law firm will always support um, all the lawyers to have a balance in their life so they, they will actually turn in um, so many activities uh, for, for real lawyers so I think if you understand the term work hard party hard that's actually something that we do in the law firm, basically. <laughs> so we, we do work hard but at the end of the day we also have a lot of fun and being very well compensated uh, to do it so we actually get more benefits in working in a law firm, ya bang. Um, I'm sure law students and fresh graduate will feel even more competitive to apply to a law firm after hearing your explanation. So uh, can you give, uh, give us some suggestion or tips for students who are interested in working in a law firm and plan on doing so in the near future? Well, we are always looking for an excellent lawyer. So meaning that we don't have any exact definition on what it means to be an excellent lawyer, but Coming back again to yourself, I mean, if you look back into yourself and ask you a question on whether one, academically, whether you're ex excellent, meaning that if I can, if I ask you what is actually the difference between a sassy, subrogation, and ovation, and you can actually understand that question very well and apply it in a real life. So um, it's not about just knowing what it is, on which clauses in the Indonesian Civil Code of those terms, but applying it in real life, like in your day-to-day -day life, uh, what is an innovation, subrogation, and assessment. So that's one. So you think about whether you have that excellence in terms of your academic knowledge. Because there's a lot of students who like to read books and memorize it. Okay? like in the Indonesian terms, anak hafalan. But when you need to apply it in real life, you don't know how to apply it because you just memorize things. The bad thing about memorizing things is actually you only, need, you only memorize things when you need to memorize things. For instance, if you have a task. But after the task passed, then you don't actually remember what you memorized because there's another task that you need to memorize. 
So your brain actually has this certain limitations of memorizing things, but if you apply it in the real world, then you can understand it better, right? So you need to have that kind of excellence in your mind and apply whatever it is that you've learned in law firm, uh, in a law school into the real world because law firm is about applying this knowledge into the practical world, right? So you need to have that kind of excellence in, 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 in your line of thinking. And number two, again, people skill is very important. So you need to have an excellent people skills, meaning that you can work in a, in a team. Working in a team, like I said previously, is very important in law firm settings because we cannot work alone. Law firm, although the name sometimes only bearing one person or two persons, but overall, the day-to-day -day operation of a law firm will require a team to, to manage. And if you cannot work with somebody else, if you're a loner, if, you, if you're a bit selfish in a sense, uh, then you cannot, you cannot produce or you cannot add any values to your team members. And it's kind of hard to work in a law firm with that kind of mentality. So your people skills will need to be excellent. Number three, I guess. Let me just cut it short. You need to be in. You need to be excellent as a person. Meaning that you're nice. We we like to work with nice people. We don't like to work with negative people. So you just need to be nice because. Again, it's a law firm is a community in itself. So if you're not a nice person, like if you're in a community where you have a really rude neighbor, you, you don't like it like that, right? So it's important for you to be nice as well uh, because there's certain balance that a law firm would like to maintain. And the last thing that we want to have is a drama within our team members. And everybody will need to be nice. Thank you so much, Bang, for your answer. I'm sure it would really help law students and fresh graduates. Um, so we are actually reaching towards the end, but before that, we are going to play a little game. All it right. is called Myth or Fact. Myth or Fact. <laughs> so there's actually a few prompts here, yes. and uh, we just want you to answer, like, uh, is, it, is it true about the lawyering world? Okay, so the, the first prompt is, lawyers need to be argumentative and aggressive to be a successful lawyer. Uh, it's a myth. <laughs> no, you don't need to be argumentative and aggressive. Uh, in fact, we don't like to have uh, a gladiator type uh, counterpart. So, um, because we're in the corporate world, the exact job of a law firm is actually to assist the client to close the deal. And you cannot close the deal by being a gladiator. You're being a gladiator in a court probably when you're doing litigation, but in a corporate law firm, uh, we don't like that kind of uh, mentality. Um, to, to, you're not going to finish the deal, basically with a gladiator mentality. I mean, I put one example where we have a counterpart being argumentative in everything that we say. They're not taking the logic because it's just for them, it's about winning, right? So we told the um, the counterpart, well, not the counsel, but the counterpart the, the on the other side and say like, if your counsel is acting like that, I'm sorry, but we're not gonna have a deal. We're not gonna finish this. So what the counterpart did, they fired the law firm. So they changed the law firm to another law firm. Because simply, you know, you cannot finish a deal with fighting all the time, right? Being a gladiator is basically fighting all the time, and it's not really appreciated in the corporate world. So, on your question, that's a myth. <laughs> so, what's important is actually to have a people skill, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, our job is to finish the deal, to close the deal. So, we need to be very cooperative with our counterpart. Uh, you need to understand on what their point of view, and they need to understand what our point of view is, so we can actually reach an amicable and fair agreement in order to close the deal. But if you're being a gladiator in, in a sense, that's not the case. I know that Bang. <laughs> Myth or fact, a good lawyer always win the case or close the deals? Um, 
that's half myth but half fact. <laughs> uh, because I think a good lawyer, like I said, the, the main job of a law firm is to assist the client to close the deal. But if the deal is not closed, it's not really your fault and it doesn't make you not to become a good lawyer. You're still a good lawyer. But there are other factors that made the deal not close, meaning that there are maybe a commercial factor surrounding it. Because client at the end of the day, when entering into the deal, they have certain conditions. So if the conditions are not met by the client, be it a commercial condition, then it's their own choice whether to walk away from the deal or not. Now, your job is not your job is actually to see what the client wants and not to push your agenda. As much as you want to close the deal, but if the client says no, then it's their call and you cannot force your agenda to it. So that's actually half myth um, in, 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 from my perspective. As much as I would love to close the deal, but you know, <laughs> if the client says no, then I cannot say anything. So as long as the client's needs are met, then you are a good lawyer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, next. Uh, myth or fact, hiring a lawyer is always expensive. Uh, that's a myth. Because expensive, it depends on your perspective. Um, you may see from the first time on our hourly rate that, oh, it's very expensive. But once, like most of, um, most of my clients' experience is actually, once they know what our service is, and they will see that that the fees that we charge is a good value because they get a top-notch advice. They get a top-notch assistance where um, certain clients will say that without your help, we're not going to finish this. So whatever we put into the money and, we, and normally we charge by the hour, they will say that this is cheap compared to what we're getting. So uh, I would say that's actually a myth because it depends <laughs> on what you're giving to the client and the value that you provided. And when the client sees that it's valuable, your fee will mean nothing to them. Okay, th thank you Bang for the answer. On to the next one. Myth or fact, lawyers cannot go on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> that's a huge myth. <laughs> Uh, Pre-pandemic, I normally go on a vacation to twice a year because we do get 15 days of leave and you need to take that leave, otherwise you're going to go insane, you know. Anywhere you go, um, anywhere you work, you need to take a vacation. Vacation means that, well, you, you go out from your day-to-day -day life so you can experience new things. But number two, I think it's more important that you go on a vacation so you can broaden up your perspective. And you do need to take that vacation. Now, if the question is whether on vacation you will need to work, sometimes we do, but not all the time. Sometimes there are ur certain urgent things that we, we need to handle. But most of the time, we, we can still enjoy our vacations. And, you know, I can easily get a two weeks off and go somewhere with my family and probably have like a half an hour call. And just to finish that, because we, like I said, it's a, it's about teamwork. So when one team member goes on a vacation, then the other team members will need to, you know, steady the ship and 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 guard the guard the rails in a sense. So you can actually have a good vacations, but the client work will still be um, on hands. So. Coming back again, it depends on the law firm, obviously it depends on the team, but what we, what I would like to encourage is that everybody will need to work like a Navy SEALs, where people will have certain um, a de degree of focus in mind when doing things. But if somebody will need to go, then everybody else will that, that stay on board can take the job for that somebody else. So yeah, I think it's a myth that lawyers cannot go on a vacation. We go on a vacation all the time. <laughs> it's actually very relieving to hear that. <laughs> so if if we want to be a lawyer, then we certainly would get break, yeah? <laughs> okay, um, on to the next one. Myth or fact, in order to be a lawyer, you have to be emotionless. Emotionless? Yes, em emotionless. Emotionless. Hmm, that's a myth. <laughs> I think it's. Um, I think if you say that you cannot be um, too emotional, 
um, everywhere you work, you cannot be too emotional because you need to control your emotion. Um, again, I would stress the fact that it's a stressful job, being a lawyer or not being a lawyer. Stress is there, and if you cannot control your emotion, then you can end up destroying um, your own image in front of your colleagues, in front of your counterparts, in front of your clients. So it's not that being a lawyer, you have to be emotionless, but everywhere you go, wherever you are, you just need to control that emotion of yours. You need to behave properly. And I think that's just a norm in a society that you need to adhere to. Not only when you're a lawyer, but whenever you are. Even if you're a student, you need to control your emotions. So that part is actually a myth. Okay, uh, thank you for your answers, Bang. We are now almost at the end of our first DOLC on air. But before we say goodbye to the audience, I would like to ask Abang Mahardika to give some advice to the audience who may want to pursue the same career path as Abang. Uh, Abang, the floor is yours. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not really prepared for this, but I think <laughs> if you, if you want to be a lawyer, you need to do your own research. There's a lot of law firms, and I mean in Jakarta alone, there are hundreds of law firms. So you need to think through on, number one, what specialization that you want to focus on. Okay? So there are many law firms, big or small, that has certain types of specializations. I mean, there are other law firms that are known for having a certain type of um, expertise. Like IP law firm, litigation law firm, there are law firms who are focusing on patent um, registrations and what have you. So you know, one, you need to you need to get a grip of what it what it is that you want to do in life because you need to think that a law firm is for a long term. Now there are students that I interview saying that I want to work in a smaller firm first just to get a feel of the pace and all the uh, professional environment, then I want to move to a big law firm. Now, I'm not 100% agreeable to that because firstly, it's, it's, it's up to you on what, whatever, what it is that you want to do because it's your life. But if I'm going to put myself into your shoes, I'm not going to do that because if my end goal is actually to work in a big law firm, might as well I start my career early in that big law firm and goes my way up. Because small law firm and big law firm will have different kind of trainings, different kind of environment. So if you go into a big law, uh, you go if you go into a small law firm first and then you move, it's like you're starting over in a new work settings. And big law firms normally tend to discount the experience that you have in, that you have in a smaller law firm because it's just a different settings. So if you really want to work in a big law then apply to the big law straight away. Uh, so that's that's actually my take uh, from from that kind of perspective. Now I think the last one that I want to say is, if you can, I think you're in your fifth semesters. A lot of you are in still in the third semesters as well. If you can, if you have a chance to have a law firm visit or, or to know anybody in the law firm, do it. You know, if you have a chance to have a workshop in a law firm or with a law firm, go. Because if you do want to work in a law firm, then you need to know the people up front. A lot of students actually do a research overnight before they apply to that law firm. And just to see the faces that work in the law firm. Research in the internet will not give you the full experience of knowing the person directly, right? So if you have a chance to go to a law firm and get to know the people in the law firm, do it. Because by then you can feel on what the law firm look like and if you, you can actually imagine better. If, you, if you're if you ought to work in that law firm, then how would, how would you feel in the future if you're working there as an employee? So if you, if you have the chance, then take it. So I think like we discussed earlier during the prep, right? <laughs> Hours that you spend in the law school, by 12 o'clock, you have nothing to do. So if you have the chance 
to go to the Sudirman area, Kuningan area on the business district. Then do it, you know. Uh, so, you know, you, you can't take the train, you can't take the MRT, you can't take the taxis, you can't take your own car. And then just go, it's only a one hour drive. But the experience that you got by coming into the law firm is priceless because you can feel um, the working environment in that law firm where your peers who stayed back in the university having their long lunches um, in the cafe in the, in the university, they will not experience that. Now, I was, you know, when, when I applied to HHP at the first beginning, it was an easy choice. Not because, um, well, happy, happy was actually, a, happy is a, one of the biggest at the time, but that's not the reason. The reason is because I went to Hahapi and I saw, um, and I met with a couple of associates in Hahapi back then, and I know how Hahapi looks like. There are other law firms that I went into, and, and which I'm interested in as well. But when I shortlist my choice of law firms that I want to apply to, it was an easy choice for me because I went there already. And a lot of students nowadays, they don't have any clue on even where the office is or what the office looks like. So if you have that chance on visiting a law firm, go. I would say do it in a heartbeat. Thank you so much for the kind and great advice, Abang. And to end this episode of DOLC on Air, I would like to briefly recap what Abang Mahardika has mentioned before. Bangdika has actually already chosen business law from the beginning, but his interest is actually in the capital market until he finds banking more suitable for him. He also did a lot of discussions with alumni and joined a lot of events back in university, which made him make up his mind to be a corporate lawyer. And for the preparations to apply to a law firm, not all lessons in uni are used in law firms and you will learn new things in law firms and mostly practical stuffs. But there are tasks and minimum requirement recruitment to join a law firm such as a 2.75 GPA organizations and being in an organization will show you that you are active, curious and able to work in a team because in a law firm working in a team is very important. And lastly, you need to have a very good personality because Law Firm is a community, so we should be a nice person in general. Bangdika also tells us that there are a lot of challenges in working as a lawyer, but that trained us to be more creative. Being a lawyer, it's important to have a great mind so that we can be more creative in, sol so in solving things, but we can go overboard from the legal field either. And by those experiences, Bang Dika met a lot of pros and cons from being a lawyer. Being a lawyer means you need to do work in a certain manner, which will take a lot of hours. Besides, the demand in law firm is very high, especially if you came from a prestigious university, people will expect more. So being a lawyer is actually a stressful job, but there are a lot of pros that you can also get. You learn a lot. You're going to have a lot of experiences, which makes you very disciplined with time. You'll be more professional and knowledgeable as a person because to do our work, it needs to, it needs a lot of training. And lastly, you'll get a lot of friends because uh, you will know them better because of the long hours of work. So it would be balanced. Massive appreciation to Abang Mardika as our speaker today for taking your time to share your experiences and advice for us. For, and for enlightening us on your LC on air, get to know legal career path, law firm edition. Hopefully, the audience gets lot get lots of fruitful insight because I got a lot here. Stay tuned on our social media for more content like this. Thank you so much, and we hope everyone have a great day. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Shalom, Om Shanti 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 Om, Nama Budaya, and peace upon us all. <laughs>